Hey everybody, welcome to How to Wrangler once again. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make some DIY grill guards for about 10 bucks. Um, all right, first step after you open the hood, you've got these six little plastic screws that aren't really screws at all. Actually, you just need a Phillips head screwdriver to lift up the middle part, and then the whole thing just pops out like that. Don't lose these. All right. Now, if it comes all the way out like this, it's not a problem. Just kind of put it back in because you don't want to lose it from being in there. You can kind of pop the bottom piece out once it's unlocked with the screwdriver again. They work like, um, like a screw that goes in the drywall where this piece expands out once this is pushed in. It's four. Five. The ones on the ends are the easiest. Six. All right. Now, you'll see it's already pretty loose here. All right, so step two is you've got to disconnect the turn signals from the, from the front uh, grill section. Underneath here, you're gonna see these little connectors and there's a little red tab on the bottom that slides in and out. You've got to slide it out, push down on the little switch, and that pops right out. The other one, in the same spot on the other side, slide that out, push this down, and it comes right out. Now once you've gotten both lights disconnected. The next step is to, this can be a little scary, but the whole front grill pops off. So just tilt it back. You might feel like you're gonna break it, it feels a little flimsy, but if you grab it from down here in the top and just kinda twist it, it'll pop right off like that. And we move on to the next step. All right, so now you've got your grill inside. Put it on a towel um, and to protect it. Now, you might have noticed when I was taking this apart that I actually had already had a, a grill cover in here. Now, uh, the one that I had on here, so I still have some of these the little connectors on here. They're stuck on. Half of them fell off. I bought this kit online for about 50 bucks had some of these screens um, that were too small. So we're gonna fix that problem and also glue these down the right way. But the first step is to get this whole area completely clean. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. All right, now that you've got everything cleaned up here, uh, the next step is to take these wire tie down mounts. Um, I bought just a pack of 10 at Radio Shack because I didn't need that many because I already had the ones from the old kit. Uh, but I have a link to uh, Amazon. You can buy a whole bunch of these for pretty cheap. Uh, it's on my website. You can check that out. So these are sticky back. Um, but the problem is that the sticky back is not that good, obviously, as you can tell by all the ones that fell off from the original kit. 
But what you're going to want to do is stick them on two per, per space in between. So it's already falling off. Two per space in between each grill, and then one along the top of each opening. Now, once we put these all down, the next step is going to be to crazy glue them in place. So I'm going to lay these all out, and I'll come back when I start crazy gluing them. All right. Now that we've got these all laid out, I'm going to take the crazy glue with the precision tip. And this is the no run gel. And first thing is to open it. And you're going to want to make sure that each one of these is very secure. Now the ones, uh, if they're sticking down pretty good, uh, like some of these ones that stayed on there, uh, the thing that you can do is just put drops around the corners and that will hold it in place. Now if you get ones and they, they end up really not sticking at all like these crappy ones that uh, I got at Radio Shack, I'm just going to put the crazy glue right on the back and drop that down on there and then put some around the edges as well. You're going to want to go ahead and go around to each one. All right. Now while we let that crazy glue dry, we're going to take our gutter guard and we're going to cut this up into four inch strips. So I'm going to measure this out just to see exactly how long we want to go here and here and I'll be right back. Now here's a little tip for when you're cutting your gutter. Now each piece is going to be the same. If you've got a corner of a table like this, like I said, you're going to measure off 14 inches long. So you can just set up your tape measure and then take a piece of tape and mark 14 inches. So now that line right there is 14 inches. And then you're going to do four inches in Put another piece of tape. At the four inch line. Now I'm actually gonna put one there. I'm gonna put one over here. Because this is a lot longer distance. And the other way you've got the end of the table. So now I know I can hang this off the edge. And I know as long as this fits right in here, I just have to cut along here and then along the edge. So just like this. There you go. Just make seven of those and you're good to go and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so the next step after you've got all these cut out, and by the way, it only took me about five minutes using my little trick there to cut these all out, all seven of these. Uh, but do keep in mind, you always wanna cut the end first because if you try to cut along here and then you're cutting this, you're gonna end up with you know weird edges. All right. So if you've cut them all four inches, you should be able, if you line it up and see, you'll have at least 
two loops in to be able to hook onto like this corner piece. So you get an extra level of protection on each side. Because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking these, the cable ties, and you're going to be looping the cable ties through to hold each of these in place. So for the outside edge, as you can see, there's two deep. You're going to want to make sure the bottom is lined up so it's not clipping the edge here because it's going to be a little bit longer, but that's good. So you're going to want to go two in, loop it down through, and this is the most tedious part of the whole thing because once you get this through, it has to go through the middle of the little cable tie downs like that. And then put it through here. And don't tighten it down all the way. Keep it loose because we want to get the other side in as well. So starting with this first one, you want to pull it so that the zip tie over here is right up along the edge and this is along the bottom here and then you want to loop this one through sideways and like that and then staying along that same track same row of holes Tighten that one down. Not all the way. Like I said, you want to keep these relatively loose until you're done. And now, because we've got this extra slack on the bottom, and this won't be tied down over here, it won't need to be because these are going to pull it tight here, you can actually cut, cut a little bit off on the bottom because this is going to, I mean, this is going to keep it taut, so you might not need to if you line it up the right way but if you feel like you want to have just a little bit more wiggle room you can do that there. So I'm going to put these two top ones into place. You're going to want to repeat this process all the way down. So make sure that the you're going to want to make sure that the opening, the small opening and the ribbed side is facing up as you put these in. Otherwise, they won't lock down. So once again, slide this one through. Like so. And then make sure you stay, go two over. It's safe. Slide that one through. Like that. And now, again, what I'm doing also, besides the fact of leaving these loose, so that I can tighten everything down and make sure it's all in the right spot later. Also, if you leave them a little bit loose, when you, um, if you're doing this like I am with the glue where it's not completely dry, you can leave them set loose and then tighten them down once you know the, dry, the glue is completely dry just so you're not sitting around waiting. Okay, so now we've got this little bit of an overlap in the middle. This is gonna be a tough one to do, but you're going to have a completely seamless screen on the other side. So you're going to want to go right through, again, the second one in. And try to bend it so it pops right through like that. And should the uh, angle of the this little divot should aim the, the tail end piece straight up for you. And then You've got that right there. Now you can see that's really looking really nice. One thing I didn't point out too, when you put these on, see they're rolling up this way? You want to put them that way because the other way they'll stick, be sticking in. This way it goes kind of with the little bit of a curve of the, of the grill. And now I could do these outside ones. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the outside ones before I do those. 
middle ones. Just because it's it's better to, to do it on the, the, for the safe side because then you'll know that how much slack you have on the outside. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that I screwed up. These right here should not be locked down yet because I have to put another one here. So I'm going to cut these off. The little package here comes with a hundred of these ties, so I'm not too concerned. I'm just going to cut those off and then do the next row. Um, but this is the basic first layout, doing it this way and then moving to the next one. And I'm going to continue to go through these and then I'll come back and I'll show you once I've got them all in there. All right, now that you've got everything in place, by the way, as I was doing this and putting all these in place, I did notice that the bottom of this was lifting up a little bit. So I added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more, just one for each of the bottoms, just to tie that down, keep everything flat. I haven't even tightened any of these and already they're pretty taut just because of the, the way you lay them down putting two together and then two together, two together, two together. Um, you want to make sure when you tighten it, just be careful, just tighten it up a little bit, just, you know, anywhere you see the need, but also keep the ends of the tie downs pointed up. That way they're not, let's see this one here is over to the right and you'll see that through the screen. I mean, you won't really see it through the screen, but if you can swing it over and then just tighten it down like that, it'll be much better off. The ones that are on the outside don't matter as much because they're, they can stick off to the side and no one will see that. So just tighten them all down and we're ready for the last step. And that's going outside. Just make sure Everything is the way you want it because you don't want to go through the process of taking the, the grill off again once this is done. And that's it. All right, so let's bring our grill outside. As you can see, looks pretty awesome. All right, now for the final part of the build is popping it back into place. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is line up the bottom. And you can see there's, there's slits in the bottom and they line up with this. And there's also this middle piece here. So you can see that these three in the middle, that's your lineup spot. So once you get that in there, it pops in. Make sure you pop it in all the way across and you're good. And then you're going to take these little guys again and pop them back in. So first thing, get it in and then push it down. So like that and like that. Push on the bottom part first and then the pin to lock it. All right, 
Now it looks great, but you don't want to forget about your turn signals. And these are just a simple matter of taking this plug, make sure the, the red part's on the bottom, pop it back in, and then slide the little red piece, the locking piece in the bottom in. So then that's locked in. Come around the other side. And this one actually the red piece is on the top. Lock that in, slide that in. And just make sure that your lights work. And there you go. That's the install of a DIY Jeep grill. Now, one thing you can do, if you want, I don't, I mean, it's up to you. I don't know how it would look, but you can take these before you install these and spray paint them with some chrome spray paint to get a chrome look. I personally like the blackout look, but that's up to you. Enjoy.